Last time on Juice Plays. Ah! What? Well, this is an actual picture of a car. I see a nurse walk out from one of the offices. She hands me a visitor's pass and a note that has the respective room numbers for each of the girls. Okay, so we'll be going in order here, I guess. 401, 402, 403, and 404. 404 error. Ha ha ha. Monica. Ha ha. Funny. Funny modders. Really? I... I'm sorry, will you excuse me for a moment? Oh, no. Absolutely not. I thought we were done with this, but then again, obviously definitely not. And on today's episode... She positions herself against the wall and let the tears fall down... Uh, and let her, tear, her tears fall down her face. A small drop of blood leaks out through her sleeve. She's opening up her wounds right in front of me. Oh, man. Aw, this is cute. Wait, what is this? What is this anime from? Or what? What is this? I I don't know this, but it's really funny that it's just the girl and a horse, and she's really mad. Why, why are they like angry at each other? All right, new background. It's really funny. I walk over to Yuri's stall and knock on the door. Y Yuri, it's me. Sorry if I seem like a total creep right now. I'm just worried about you. Yuri starts crying a little harder. I wince at the realization that I probably made her feel worse. New music. After a few minutes of hearing nothing but Yuri's soft cries, she starts to speak. Why did you come looking for me? You weren't supposed to see me like this. Yuri's choked up words pain me to my core. I feel tears rush to my eyes, but I can't stop myself from breaking down, and I think about my words carefully. Oh, but I stop myself from breaking down. Yuri? Yuri continues to sob. You think I'm a freak now, don't you? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's not my fault. I can't help it. It's the only way I know how to make... Uh, it's the only way I know how to feel better. That wasn't something I expected to hear from someone like Yuri. But now I know more about why she does it. I would never judge you, Yuri. Don't forget that. You're right. It's not your fault, and it will never be. It never will be. But you have to talk to someone about it, please. I hear Yuri take a deep breath, sounding like she's having an internal battle with herself. The poor girl must be feeling so many emotions right now. I hear the door to the stall unlock. Yuri steps out, her sleeve rolled down so I can't see the cuts. Well, for you, Juice, I can try. Aw, little tears. I think that's new. I don't think that's in... That's the sprite that's in the original. I think they just added the tears on. I guess that's a start, but she needs real help. I don't know how to help her properly. I'm no therapist or anything, but the least I can do is... Eh? Yuri pulls me in for a hug, something I wasn't really expecting. I awkwardly hug her back. Hey, I'm just glad to know you're willing to talk to me. So, um, can we go somewhere else? I, I feel kind of creepy standing in the girl's bathroom like this. Yuri quickly lets go of me and realizes the situation we're in. Ah, I... Yes, you're right. Let's go. I open the door and peek outside, just to make sure nobody is around to see us walk out together. That would give people the wrong idea. I walk out and stand against the wall. Yuri follows, still looking really upset. You know, we don't have to return to the club just yet if you don't feel like it. Well, I wouldn't want to keep Natsuki waiting all alone. Oh, speaking of Natsuki, does she know anything about this? No! Yuri suddenly raises her bro- No! <laughs> Making me jump. No, I mean, I don't know. I just, I don't want Natsuki to find out the person I really am. She'll think I'm a freak. Life's gotta always be missing with me. That just reminds me of the song Freak on a Leash by Korn. Um, okay. She, she won't want to talk with me anymore. Yuri starts to cry again. That's probably not true. You, Sayori, Monica, and Natsuki. You're all the closest friends I've ever had. I don't want to lose any of you. Hey, Yuri, it's going to be okay. You know I like you for who you are, and you don't have to be perfect to be my friend. I'm sure Na and Natsuki understands as well. Both coming out of the bathroom, and Yuri leaves with tears. No! Oh, this sprite. Yeah, she has tears going down her, her face. 
gonna be honest there my my brain my brain okay anyway yuri stop, stops crying and looks at me her eyes shining with tears but i need help i don't think i can stop on my own um, i'm afraid of myself i'm afraid of the things i do to myself but i can't help it ever since i was a little girl i would be punished a lot for doing the things i loved interesting in my parents' eyes, I wasn't the perfect girl they wanted me to be. And now, I push people away. I don't want people to know who I really am. It's why I ran away from you. I'm afraid that if I reveal my true self to others, they'll just leave me. So when I cut myself, I feel a release of all the tension built up inside. It's exhilarating. Whenever I feel intense emotions, I just need to cut. Whether I'm happy or sad, envious or scared, I I just want to tear my arm apart. Oh, she seems really angry there. Here he starts shaking. It's clear she's never opened up to anyone like this before. This this doesn't feel right. Yuri clenches her wounded arm. I involuntarily let out a gasp. Is she no. I shouldn't be telling you this. I messed up, like I always do. I I don't need your help. You can't help me, no matter what you or uh, what you do or what you say. I'm too far gone, and I messed up by telling you. I know you hate me now, and I know the other girls will hate me too. People will say I'm nothing but a freak, nothing but a girl just seeking attention. But there's one thing those people get wrong. I don't want attention. Um, if you know someone who does self-harm, then try your best to... Hear them out and listen to them, and obviously they are not a freak. Do not make fun of people for self-harm. That's a fucked up thing to do. Okay, anyway. I just want everyone to leave me alone. That's not true either. You should go back to the club with Natsuki, Juice. Tell her I'm quitting the literature club. Oh, boy. Yuri starts clenching her arm harder. She's hurting herself. Just leave me alone. Yuri closes her eyes and starts crying softly. What do I do? I'm obviously not leaving her by herself. I think to that day two months ago. Sayori, uh, how would you handle a situation like this? You would hug her! I slowly walk over to her, but to my surprise, she starts walking backwards. St stay. Stay away from me. Yuri starts scratching at her sleeve, wincing in pain. I feel absolutely hopeless. Oh boy. I get an overwhelming feeling of urgency, similar to how I felt when I walked in on Sayori that night. I don't dare move a muscle and attempts to stop her from inching further away from me. But she keeps on walking backwards. Okay, new CG. She positions herself against the wall and let the tears fall down. Uh, and let her, te her tears fall down her face. A small drop of blood leaks out through her sleeve. She's opening up her wounds right in front of me. Oh, man. Y Yuri! Yuri opens her eyes slowly. I couldn't stop myself from yelling. All just an act of desperation. Please, don't walk away from this. I don't know how to help you. I really don't. But walking away from this isn't going to make things better. You don't understand, Juice. I can't be helped. Yes, you can! I know you can! Say a... I stop myself at the thought of Sayori's counseling. The drop of blood falls off of Yuri's hand and lands on the floor. My own tears follow. My vision gets blurry, and I feel my chest getting heavy. I feel my chest get heavy. Juice, don't cry. I wipe the tears from my eyes. Yuri, I don't know how to help you, but I can't bear to see you like this. If this doesn't prove that I don't care about you... Huh? If this doesn't prove that I don't care about you, then I don't know what else it'll take. Wait, what? Isn't it supposed to be if this doesn't prove that I care about you? That's what that... Like, that's not right. <laughs> okay. I once told a special someone that I'd always be there for them. That I'd never let them go, and I would always be by their side. Can't you see that I feel the same way? You're my friend, Yuri, and I know it'll take a lot of time and effort. But I know you. Uh, but I know you can get better again. Yuri stays quiet and, l and lets her tears fall to the ground. Damn it! How am I supposed to get through to you? 
Without thinking, I walk over to Yuri and wrap my arms around her. Yuri doesn't react. Yuri. These feelings, I know how intense they are for you. I know you've been so stressed to a point where this feels like the only solution for you. But I want to help you find a healthier way to deal with it. I don't want you to hurt yourself anymore. I don't think you're a freak. And I don't hate you. And I can assure you with 100% confidence that the club really cares about you. Monica, Sayori, and Natsuki. I'm sure they want nothing more than for you to be okay. Because we're your friends, and we care about you more than you could ever imagine. I feel Yuri's arms raised and wrap around me. She's finally hugging back. Yuri's body shakes gently. She lets out a louder cry and buries her face into my blazer, her warm tears soaking it up. Her cries are loud. It's like every emotion she's ever suppre suppressed is coming out all at once. Yuri really needed this. A few minutes pass before Yuri starts to speak again. D do you really care about me that much? Do you? Yuri chokes up on her words. Or you can watch Juice play it. Yes, but I've already played it on stream. You can also watch my podcast on it, which I'll post now so you can throw it in another tab, actually. If you haven't seen this. Okay, anyway. Yuri chokes up on her words. Do you really want me to get better? Of course I do, Yuri. I want to see you get better. I wouldn't be here with you if I didn't care. Yuri starts calming down. Her breathing has slowed to a gentle rhythm, with an occasional twitch. I gently rub her back to comfort her. I wonder, when was the last time anyone has shown that, uh, how much they care for her? How many people has she pushed away throughout her life? Yuri? Hmm? I promise I won't tell Natsuki or anybody. And I promise I'll do everything in my power to help you get through this. We'll pull through, together. Yuri clenches my back. I feel another tear land on my uniform. T Thank you, Juice. Thank you so much. Okay. Whew. Yuri clears her throat and motions for me to follow her to the empty classroom I found her in. So that's nice. That was a nice moment. I, let's see how this develops with Yuri. What? As I follow her to the classroom, she stops, she stops in front of a desk. The book she was telling me about lay there on top. Do you want to read together? My eyes widen in surprise, but I say, but I decide not to question her further. Sure, Yuri. She hands the book over to me sheepishly. Bah! <laughs> okay. As I make my way through the pages, I hear Yuri's breathing, slow and constant. Out of the corner of my eye, I see her eyes fixed on the words, jotting back and forth, almost like a typewriter. <laughs> we continue reading up to the third chapter until we hear a little voice we both know all too well. Yuri? Juice? Where are you guys? Natsuki opens the classroom door to see us on the floor reading together. Hey, what are you two doing? We walk in the club room together. We watch Natsuki walk over to the back of the room and pull out a tray, seemingly out of nowhere. She lifts the foil, revealing her famous white frosted kitty cupcakes lined up perfectly along the tray, each one begging to be eaten. Please eat me! Please! Ah, now this is what I love about the literature club. Eating cupcakes, I take a huge bite out of the cupcake, filling my mouth with so much flavor I start to moan a bit. All right. Natsuki and Yuri laugh at my reaction and join in with me. What, start moaning? Oh, can I tell you guys uh, about this manga I was reading? I think it's only fair since you guys read without me. What did you have in mind? Natsuki walks in front of us and begins explaining. Okay, so it all starts with these dragon balls. Yo, let's fucking go. Let's go. That's my girl. That's my girl. Yeah. Well, I'll be heading home now. Um, N N Natsuki, would you like to walk home with me today? Oh, well, sure, Yuri. But this isn't going to be an everyday thing, all right? I know. I just could use a little bit of company today. Natsuki smiles and walks out of the club room. Well, come on, Yuri. Don't keep me waiting, slowpoke. Yuri smiles and turns to me. Thanks again for checking on me, Juice. 
Of course, Yuri. If you ever need someone to talk to, you know where to find me. I watch Yuri walk out of the club gracefully as ever. Home sweet home. My friends, Yuri, Natsuki, and Sayori. They all need serious help. I guess I'll have to stay strong for them. This is what Monica would want, right? Man. Man, if she were here, she'd be able to help me with all this. I close my eyes and drift off to sleep. I hope Yuri will get the help she needs. What the fuck's gonna happen right now? What's what's gonna happen? Hello? Hi. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh, she's sad. Uh, she was trying to do something with code. Got some chills, okay. Uh, oh, hello there, moniker. Hello there, monker. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I wake up gasping for air. Jeez, hell of a dream. Maybe Yuri's story really got to me. I think back on walking in on her, the blood gushing out of her arm as she looked at me, her face full of terror. In that dream, why was Monica in there? I decide to call up Sayori. I kind of feel bad for waking her up at this time, but surely she won't mind. At least I sure hope not. The sleepy Sayori answered the phone. Hello? Juice? Why did you wake me up so late? I'm sorry, bun. Oh, oh, oh! <laughs> the cuteness impales Juice's heart. I had another weird nightmare, and hearing your voice helps me calm down. Uh, you've been having lots of scary dreams, haven't you? Do you want me to go over? Yeah. My heart skips a beat. Getting laid percent. I don't know. I would assume it's just going to be wholesome cuddle time. Well, you said you were scared. I wanted to come over and scare the demons away. With hugs! <laughs> Sounds just like Sayori. Sayori puts her arms around me and hugs me tightly. Man, you're the best, Sayori. Well, I don't think I can sleep. We can watch some TV for a bit if you'd like. Yes, we should watch a funny movie. All right, good idea. Don't tell me Monica's gonna like appear on the TV or something. Aw, this is cute. Wait, what is this? What is this anime from? Or what? What is this? I I don't know this, but it's really funny that it's just the girl and a horse, and she's really mad. Why, why are they like angry at each other? Hey, Juice. Yeah. I never got to thank you for helping me. What do you mean? I know it was you who told the doctors about my depression. My heart skips a beat when she says that. Oh, how did you know? You're the only person I've ever told about my depression, silly. Oh. We watch TV for about 30 minutes before I start hearing soft snoring. I look down to find Sayori fat fall. F Whoa, what the heck? Fast asleep on my chest. Love. My friends usually throw that word around throw that word around like it's meaningless to them, but it holds meaning for me. Sayori begins to wake up. <laughs> That's a funny sprite. Mm, Juice, how long have you been awake for? Sayori picks up her head and rubs her eyes. I walk into the club room feeling totally exhausted from the school day. So what are we doing today, Sayori? Uh, well, I actually don't have anything planned for today. As usual. Although, this isn't so much of a bad thing. I've been meaning to get a chance to talk to Natsuki. I figured now's a good time uh, to finally ask her about her family issues at home. I look over at Natsuki's usual reading spot to find her getting ready to read her manga. I decide to walk over and say hello. Hello. Oops. Oh, we should save, actually. Well, I wanted to ask. Remember that note? Uh oh Natsuki looks toward Yuri and Sayori, who are talking about some of their favorite books. I want to show you something, but don't say a word. I nod to show my understanding. Oof. Okay. Natsuki slowly lifts up her sleeve. Oh my god. Bruises lie all over her forearm. Some look, look, look like as if they just appeared yesterday. It doesn't help to think that they're all over her once broken arm. This is what happens to me almost every day. 
Even though Natsuki already made me aware of this, it still shocks me to see that she's been going through all of this without any of us knowing. After the accident, I struggled to let the doctors help me. I was afraid they would hurt me the same way my dad would. That's when I realized I can't trust anybody anymore, even though I know they can help me. My dad, he's ruining my life. Natsuki runs out of the club room. Okay, well... Uh, well, now that's going to draw some attention to her if she didn't want the others to see. But that's okay. Can't really control your emotions like that. Eh? What happened? Why did Natsuki run away like that? Oh, um, well... I'll go check on her. I am the vice president, after all. It's what Monica would want. From Monica! He replaces her hand on Sayori's shoulder, stopping her in her tracks. Sayori, I understand you feel the need to help her, but trust me. She needs her space. She'll be back. Just give her some time. But... We'll be here for her when she comes back. Do you want to help me make some tea for her? I like this song. Okay, that's nice of you, Yuri. I keep sending glances toward the club room doors, wondering if Natsuki would ever return. I wish there was more we could do for her. Suddenly, the club room doors open slowly. Natsuki walks in, keeping her head low. Sayori, Yuri, and I keep our distance. The room is silent except for the sound of Yuri pouring tea into cups. Okay, here's some tea, everyone. It's a little hot, so be careful. Here you go, Natsuki. And here you go, Juice. I pick up the teacup and take a small sip. Sure enough, the warmth and flavor of the tea helps me calm down. I have to pee again. I just peed like 10 minutes ago. Even Natsuki seemed to perk up a little after she took a sip. Well, she's still crying there. If you don't feel like talking about anything, you don't have to. Just know we're all here for you. Sarah gives N Natsuki a sad smile. Natsuki, still looking down, begins to speak. Well, my dad... Natsuki pauses. It's like she's afraid of mentioning this sort of thing. It's all right, Natsuki. Take a deep breath. Natsuki follows Yuri's command and breathes in before speaking. My dad treats me horribly. He beats me almost every day for the smallest of things. All I have to, all I have to eat is rice and ketchup. The food isn't nourishing at all. Natsuki closes her eyes. I like it when he doesn't come home or when he's too tired to do anything. That's when I'm free to read my manga or bake. It's the only things I can do that make me feel happy at home. My dad would kill me if he saw all the manga I had, and I'm sure he wouldn't like it if he found out all the baking I do behind his back. I... Natsuki looks away as tears start forming in her eyes again. I wish all of this would just disappear. But at the same time, I still love my papa. Sometimes he would take me out for ice cream or shopping for new clothes. I still love him because he's my papa. But even then, I felt like he was going to yell or hit me as soon as I got home. The more nice things he did, the more nervous I became. It scares me. I can't even get home without living in constant fear of what he'll do next. All I want for him to do is stop hurting me so much. Or maybe I'm just a horrible daughter. Maybe I'm just too much of a brat. Natsuki starts crying a little harder now. The three of us share a concerned look. A concern, concerned looks. Yuri opens her mouth to speak, but no words come out. N Natsuki. We, we want to help. You can't help me. You'll never understand what it's like to have the, the one person who's supposed to take care of you beat you down every day. You'll never understand what it's like to walk home just to be thrown around and treated like garbage. Girls shouldn't be afraid of going home. Girls shouldn't dread the idea of school being over. Why? Why does it have to be me? Why does he do this to me? Hmm. Natsuki rests her back against the wall. Her tears are, are flowing down her neck as she tries so desperately to keep herself together. I don't want to go home. I just want all of this to go away. I want, uh, I want this to all go away. Yeah. She hugs herself and cries softly, barely loud enough for us to hear. Yuri steps backwards. The confidence she had a few minutes ago is completely absent now. The three of us look at the pink-haired girl sympathetically. I can't believe I'm seeing Natsuki like this. Usually she's known for her outbursts and upfront nature. Knowing, known her loving, 
Oh, known for loving manga, sweets, and cute things. Now she's completely broken. Broken by the one man who was supposed to care for her. Almost subconsciously, I stepped backwards as well. I don't know what to say or to do other than give Natsuki the space she probably needs. Suddenly, Yuri clears her throat and steps forward again. Yuri looks at me and nods, as to assure me she's got everything under control. Yuri takes a deep breath, stands up straight, and starts speaking. You're a very strong girl, Natsuki. Not a lot of people can open up to others like this. I understand you're hurting, but may I make a suggestion? I want to help you get away from your troubles. Natsuki stands up slowly and nods her head. I think you should move out of your home. We can even tell the authorities whenever you feel comfortable doing so. I know it'll be very scary at first, but we're all here to support you. Natsuki stays quiet. I guess it's my turn to say something. Well, you've stayed with Sayori before. Why don't you move with her as a, move in with her as a starting point? So he perks up after hearing this. That sounds like a great idea. My counselor says that spending time with friends is a great stress reliever. Natsuki wipes her eyes, her tears, and looks up at us. You guys, you guys make me feel safe here. This club. It's a safe place for me. These past two months have been the best months of my life. I thought things would be different after the accident, but all of you made the literature club an amazing place. Thank you all. Yuri walks over to Natsuki and gives her a hug. Natsuki looks shocked, but to my surprise, doesn't resist. Instead, she slowly hugs back. After more hugging and crying... Do you do it? Uh, we've all calmed down and started working on a plan uh, for Natsuki's move. Yeah, let's go home. I'm sleepy. Suri lets out a pretty hearty yawn. Well, at least you won't keep me awake with all your dumb games. Hey, my games are fun. You guys can discuss this at home. Now, oh, come on, it's getting late. Boo -doo -doo -da -da, boo -da -da. No, what the fuck? I did like the song, Monica. I did. I said I liked it. I like the song. Uh, sure, I guess so. I didn't really get a good listen at it, though. Okay. Huh? What? Place my hand on uh, my head in pain. Ah, what the? Juicy, you okay? You blinked out there for a second. Yeah, I'm fine. Oh, didn't even realize we were home already. I wake up feeling pretty rested, despite having a pretty rough day yesterday. Yeah, just don't be sad anymore. It's free, lol. I stretch and send Sierra my usual good morning text. Hmm, she usually responds pretty quickly. Maybe she's busy with Natsuki. I get dressed, make myself some toast, and walk outside to meet the girls. Good morning, Natsuki. Did everything go okay last night? Well, I guess. She was quieter than usual, but I didn't complain too much about that. She's taking forever to wake up, though. I think she's sleeping in again. I'm going to walk to school on my own. I don't want to be late. Wait, Natsu- I'll see you later, Juice! Before I could stop her, she walks off, leaving me on my own to wonder why Sayori isn't outside yet. <sighs> it's been a while since she's slept in like this, and then it hits me. How could I forget about something like this so easily? She's probably beating herself up over what happened yesterday. I rush towards Sayori's front door and hastily knock. No answer. I open the door, rush into the house, and run upstairs. Dude, I swear to fucking God. Sayori? Oh, okay. Whew. What are you doing here, silly? I'm not dressed yet. But you can come in. Ooh, okay. I sigh in release. I sigh in relief in hearing her soft voice. What the fuck? Okay. Okay, 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 okay. I gently open the door to find Sayori still dressed in her pink shirt. Well, come on and get dressed. You're going to be late. As I walk closer to Sayori, I notice she looks a little bit different. Sayori? She doesn't respond. She only gives me an empty smile. Uh, she only gives me any... Uh, uh, what? She only gives me any empty smile. Okay. <laughs> Sari, what happened? Is everything okay? I'm okay, silly. <laughs> okay, so clearly not. 
Sayori, I've known you for long enough to know when you're sad. Please tell me what's wrong. You have nothing to be ashamed of. I'm right here for you. Isn't the main character a guy? I take her hands into mine. The closer I get to her, the more I notice she's been crying. Her eyes are red and watery. Isn't the main character a guy? Yeah, he is. But they're dating as well. But I do have reason to be ashamed. Sayori's eyes are filling with tears. Sayori, I understand if this isn't easy for you, but you can talk to me about anything. Never forget that. Sayori starts crying, her warm tears landing on my arms. I'm just a burden on you and I know it! I love you so much, Juice, but I'm not good enough for someone like you. I'm worthless. I'd weigh you down more than anything, Juice. You're better off with Natsuki, Yuri, or even Monica. I'm nothing more than just junk. Sayori's grip on my hands weaken, as if she started to lose hope. Despite hearing something similar from her yesterday, those words hit me like a punch to the stomach. Does she really think I don't want to be with her? Is this what de depression does to someone? Sayori, why would I ever leave you for one of our friends? I've known you for, what, a few months? A feeling of pure anguish fills my mind. I get closer to Sayori and place my hand on her cheek, moving it upward so her eyes meet mine. I've known you for as long as I can remember. Why would I ever do something to jeopardize all those memories we shared together? Sayori, to my surprise, steps back. I feel a lump in my throat. She shakes her head. N no. Her voice is shaking now, clearly on the verge of sobbing. No matter how many times you tell me, I still can't stop thinking my- uh, I can't stop- I still can't stop- st Oh my god. Just can't stop telling myself it isn't true. Sorry. I'm like- It makes no sense that you would leave me, but the rain clouds, these voices- they just won't leave me alone. I, I thought that maybe, after all this time, I would see sunshine again. But it just won't get out of my head. Sorry lets out a loud cry and collapses into my arms. Her body is shivering pretty intensely. I hold her close to me and gently rub her back. I slowly lift her off her feet and carry her towards her bed. I sit, her, I sit with her until she slowly drifts off to sleep. She must have exhausted herself. I'm here, Sayori. I'm here. We missed school entirely. I stayed with Sayori on her bed for the whole day. Subscribe to the video or I'll 